Hi, sixth grade Latin class. This is Mrs. Langham. Today we're continuing on with chapter seven of Esperanza Rising. Okay, turn to page 100 and let's get started. Las Cebollas. We're here, said Isabel as the truck turned into camp and slowed to a crawl. Esperanza stood up and looked over the cab. They were in a large clearing surrounded by great fields. Row upon row of white wooden cabins formed long lines connected like bunkhouses. Each cabin had one small window and two wooden steps that led to the door. She couldn't help but think that they weren't even as nice as the servants' cabins in Agua Calientes. They reminded Esperanza more of the horse stalls on the ranch than of a, than of a place for people to live. A big mountain loomed in the east, framing one side of the valley. Martha jumped out and ran towards some girls standing together near the cabin. Esperanza could hear them talking in English, the words hard and clipped as if they were speaking with sticks in their mouths. They all looked at her and laughed. She turned away, thinking that if Isabel could learn English, then maybe someday she could learn it too. A line of flatbed trucks pulled into a clearing, and Campesinos hopped down, home from the fields. People called to one another. Children ran to their fathers, yelling, Poppy, Poppy! Esperanza felt a deep pang. She watched and wondered how she would fit into this world. Isabel, Isabel pointed to a wooden building off to the side. That's where they have all the toilets. Esperanza cringed as she tried to imagine having no privacy. We're lucky, said Isabella song, solemnly. In some camps, we had to go in ditches. Esperanza looked down at her, swallowed and nodded, suddenly thankful for something. So remember in the last chapter, we talked about the idea of perspective and how important it is to be thankful. And here you can see that the perspective is that they could be going in ditches. At least they have outhouses. And so she really, Esperanza is really having to have a reality check here of what her life is going to be. And it is going to be hard for her to fit into this new world. A foreman came over and shook hands with Juan and Alfonso and pointed to the cabin in front of the truck. The women got out, took the babies, and helped Miguel with the bag. Mama and Esperanza walked into the cabin. It had two small rooms. One half of the front room was the kitchen with a stove, sink, and counter, and the table and chairs. A pile of wood waited near the stove. Across the room was a mattress on the floor. The back room had another mattress big enough for two people and a tiny cot. In between sat a wooden fruit crate to, to be used as a night table, its sides touching each bed. Above was another small window. Mama looked around and then gave Esperanza a weak smile. Is this our cabin or Hortensia's or Alfonso's? asked Esperanza, hoping that hers and Mama's might be better. We're all together in this cabin, said Mama. Mama, we can't possibly fit. Esperanza, they will only give one cabin for each man with a family. There is no housing for single women. This is a family camp so we must have a male head of household to live and to work here, and that is Alfonso. Mama sank to the bed. Her voice sounded tired. He has told them that we are his cousins, and if anyone asks us, we must say it's true. Otherwise, we cannot stay. We are just next door to Juan and Josefina, so we can adjust the sleeping arrangements. Miguel will sleep next door with them and the babies, and Isabel will sleep here with Alfonso, Hortensia, and us. Miguel came in and sat down with their valises and left. Esperanza could hear Alfonso and Hortensia in the next room talking about the camp office. Mama got up to go unpack and began to sing. Esperanza felt anger crawling up in her throat. Mama, we're living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. The talking suddenly stopped in the other room. Mama gave Esperanza a long, hard look. She calmly walked over and shut the door to the small room. Sit down, she said. Esperanza sat on a tiny cot, its springs screeching. Mama sat on the bed opposite her, their knees almost touching. Esperanza, if we had stayed in Mexico and I had married Tio Luis, we would have had one choice, to be apart and miserable. Here we have two choices to be together and miserable, or to be together and happy. Mija, we have each other, and Abuelita will come. How would she want you to behave? I choose to be happy. What will you choose? 
Okay, now this is a powerful moment because we are each faced with that choice each and every day. We can choose to be thankful, we can choose to be glad, or we can choose to wallow about all the different things that are going wrong. I mean, there are lots of things on a day that could go wrong. Just pick one. You know, if you wanted to complain about something, you could. But there's another choice. There's another way that you could respond to your environment. You could choose to be thankful. You could choose to be joyful, even if the situation around you doesn't feel that way. She knew what Mama would want to hear. Happy, she said quietly. Do you know how lucky we are, Esperanza? Many people came to this valley and waited months for a job. Juan went to a lot of trouble to make sure that we had this cabin waiting for us when we got here. Please be grateful for the favors bestowed upon us. Mama bent over and kissed her and then left the room. Esperanza laid down on the cot. A few minutes later, Isabel came in and sat on the bed. Will you tell me what it's like to be so very rich? She looked at Isabel, her eyes anticipating some wonderful story. Esperanza was quiet for a moment, clinging to one possible thought. And then she said, I am still rich, Isabel. We will only be here until Abuelita is well enough to travel. And she will come with her money and we will buy a big house. A house that Papa would have been proud for us to live in. Maybe we will buy two houses so that Hortensia, Alfonso, and Miguel can live in one and work for us again. And you can visit, Isabel. You see, this is only temporary. We will not be here for long. Oh, poor Esperanza. She really doesn't see that her life is completely different. She still wants to be the rich girl. She still wants to have servants. She, she was wanting and craving that normalcy in her life of what she deemed as right and normal. And she's missing her dad so very much. And she thinks that going back to that old way of life will somehow fill that void inside of her. But we know from our Bibles classes, from the different things, even in our own lives, that money doesn't bring happiness. It's all about your choices. Yes, that's the truth, said Esperanza, staring at the ceiling that someone had covered with newspaper and cardboard. My papa would have never wanted us to live in a place like this. She closed her eyes and heard Isabel tiptoe out of the room and shut the door. The weariness of the days of travel flooded over her, and her mind wandered from people peeing in ditches to Martha's rudeness to the horse stalls at El Rancho de las Rosas. How could she be happy or grateful when she had never been more miserable in her entire life? When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light, and she heard Mama, Hortensia, and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled café and chorizo. The café and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to hers, so Esperanza quietly pulled on a long, wrinkled shirt and a white blouse. She brushed her hair and went into the other room. "'Good morning,' said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table, Hortensia patted her hand. You missed going to the fireman's op foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all the food come from? asked Esperanza. Josefina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until they could she bought some groceries until we can all go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama. You and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be picking grapes, and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the sheds. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You're not old enough to work in the sheds, said Mama, and Isabel is not old enough to watch the babies by herself. And if you watch the babies, then Josefina can work, and that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job, too, sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they would deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. What's the platform, Esperanza, not, Esperanza asked? It's a big wooden floor outside in the middle of the camp. Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at her food. She did not want to be stuck in a camp with all the children. Where's Miguel, she said. He's already left for Bakersfield with some other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom, rubbing her eyes. Mi sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go and say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mama, and she made un burrito de frijoles for lunch and wrapped the soft tortilla filled with pinto beans in paper. She looked different. 
Was it the long cotton dress and the big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mama, said Esperanza, your hair. Mama's hair ran, ran down her back in a single long braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mama wear her hair in that way. It was always done up in the beautiful plaited bun or when she was ready for, for bed, brushed out and flowing. Mama looked shorter and somehow not herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I, I figured that that I figured out that I can't wear my hat with my hair on top of my head, and this makes more sense, does it not? After all, I'm going to work today, not a fiesta. And then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The trucks leave at six thirty to take us to the sheds. Take good care of the babies and stay with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up, hesitantly touching her hair again. When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of, fa instead of fastening another row of whoa, whoa, start me start over. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the fields. Straight ahead, across the dirt road, were several chinaberry trees and a mulberry tree that proved provided deep shade over a wooden table. Beyond the row of trees were great fields still lush. To the right, across a grassy field, stood the main road, a truck piled high with, pro with produce la, 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 la. A truck piled high with produce drove by, losing the cloud. Let me read that whole sentence over. A truck piled high with produce drove by, loosing a cloud of debris. After it passed, the sharp smell told her that they were onions, the outer why can't I read? Let me try that again. After it passed, the sharp smell told her that they were onions, the dry outer skins being shredded by the wind. Another truck followed. Again, the smell bit into her senses. It was still early, so the air was cool, but the sun was bright and she knew it would be hot soon. The hens pecked and poked around the front steps. They must have been happy to be off the train. Esperanza shooed them out of her way as she turned and walked next door. The babies were still in their pajamas. Isabel was struggling to feed Lupe her oatmeal while Pepe crawled on the floor. Splotches of his cereal still tucked, stuck to his cheeks. As soon as she saw Esperanza, as soon as he saw Esperanza, he reached up for her. Let's clean them up, said Isabel, and then I'll show you the camp. First, Isabel took Esperanza to the platform she was to sweep and showed her where the brooms were stored. Then they walked through the rows of cabins, each with a baby on her hip. As they passed open doors, Esperanza could already smell the beans and onions that some had started simmering for dinner. Women were dragging, women were dragging big metal wash tub, tubs beneath the shade of trees. A group of young boys kicked up a ball. Mm -hmm. A group of young boys kicked a ball up and down the dirt road, stirring up dust. A little girl wearing a man's undershirt as a dress ran up to Isabel and took her hand. This is Sylvia. She is my best friend. Next week, we will go to school together. Sylvia switched around and grabbed Esperanza's free hand. Esperanza looked down at Sylvia's dirty hands. Sylvia grinned up at her, and Esperanza's first thought was to pull her hand away and wash it as soon as possible. Then she remembered Mama's kindness to the peasant girl on the train and her disappointment in Esperanza. She didn't want Sylvia to start crying if she were to pull away. She looked around at the dusty camp and thought that it must be hard to stay clean in such a place. She squeezed Sylvia's hand and said, I have a best friend too. Her name is Marisol and she lives in Agua Caliente. Isabel introduced Esperanza to Irene and Malina, two women who were hanging clothes to dry on a long line stretched between the cabins and a tree. Irene had long gray hair tied in a tail. Marie, Melina didn't look much older than Miguel, and she already had a baby of her own. We heard the story of how you came from Agua Calientes, said Melina. My husband is from there. He used to work for Señor Rodriguez. Esperanza's face lit up with the news. He knew my father since he was a boy. Do you think your husband knew Mary Sol, Señor Rodriguez's daughter? Marin, Malin, Melina laughed. No, I'm sure he didn't. He was un campesino, a field servant. He would not know the family. Esperanza felt very awkward and didn't mean to make Melina admit that her husband was a servant. 
but Melina didn't seem bothered and began recalling other farms her husband had worked on in Agua Caliente. Isabel pulled on Esperanza's arm. We need to change the babies. As they walked back to the cabin, she said, They are mother and daughter. They come over to talk and crochet with my mother all the time. How do they know about all how do they know all about us already? Isabel raised her hand and made her fingers tap up and down on her thumb as if the mouth was talking. Everyone in camp knows each other's business. Do you know how to change a diaper? asked Esperanza when they got back to the cabin. Certainly, said Isabel. I will change them and you can rinse out the diapers. We need to do some laundry, too. Esperanza watched as the young girl laid the babies down one at a time, unpinned their diapers, wiped their bottoms clean, and pinned on fresh diapers. Isabel handed Esperanza the smelly bundles and said, Take them to the toilets and dump them, and I'll fill the wash tub. Esperanza held them at arm's length almost and almost ran to the toilets. Several more onion trucks passed by, their smell accosting her eyes and nose as much by the diapers. Accosting her nose and eyes as much as, by, as the diapers. By the time she got back, Isabel had already filled two wash tubs with water from an outside pipe and was swirling soap around in one of them. A washboard was propped inside. Okay, now think about this. Think about all the work they're having to do just to change a baby's diaper. Think about how many times a day you have to change a baby's diaper. This is a lot of work, so be very grateful for the different things that we have. We have running water inside of our houses. We have toilets inside of our houses. And for those of you with little siblings at home, we have disposable diapers. You don't have to wash out diapers anymore, and you don't have to wash them in a wash tub. If you have to wash something, you can throw it in the washing machine. We have a lot of really neat things right now in our day and time, so it's important to be very thankful. Esperanza went to the wash tub and hesitated staring into the water. Bits of onion skins floated on the surface of the soapy water. She held a corner of one of the diapers, lightly dipping it in and out of the water, her hand never getting wet, so she's doing this, I can just imagine. After a few seconds, she gingerly lifted the diaper from the water. Now what? she asked. Esperanza, you must scrub them, like this. Isabel walked over, took the diapers, and plunged them into the water up to her elbows. The water quickly became murky. She drubbed the diapers with soap, vigorously scrubbed them back and forth on the washboard, and wrung them out. Then she transferred them into the next tub, rinsing and wringing them again. Isabel shook out the clean diapers and hung them on the line stretched between the chinaberry and mulberry trees. Then she stared it on the clothes. Esperanza was amazed. She had never washed anything in her life, and Isabel, who was only eight years old, made it look easy. Puzzled, Isabel looked at Esperanza. Don't you know how to wash clothes? Well, Hortensia took everything out to the laundry quarters, and the servants, they always... She looked at Isabel and shook her head no. Isabel's eyes got bigger, and she looked worried. Esperanza, when I go to school next week, you will be here alone with the babies and will have to do the laundry. Esperanza took a deep breath and said weakly, I can learn. A la and later today, you must sweep the platform. Uh, you, you do know how to sweep. Of course, said Esperanza. She had seen people sweep many times. Many, many times, she assured herself. But she was already too embarrassed about the washing to admit anything else to Isabel. So do you think that Esperanza really does know how to sweep? Or do you think that maybe that's something she doesn't know? Let's find out. Isabel sat with the babies while Esperanza went to sweep the platform. The camp was quiet, and even though it was late in the day, the sun was unrelenting. She retrieved the broom and stepped into the wooden floor. Dried and brittle onion skins were everywhere. In her entire life, Esperanza had never held a broom in her hand. But she had seen Hortensia sweep, and she tried to visualize the memory. It couldn't possibly be that hard. She put both hands near the middle of the broomstick and moved it back and forth. It swung wildly. The motion seemed awkward, and the fine dirt on the wooden planks lifted into a cloud. Onion jackets flew into the air instead of gathering together in a neat pile like Hortensia's. Esperanza's eyebrows did not, excuse me, Esperanza's elbows did not know what to do. Neither did her arms. She felt streams of perspiration sliding down her neck. She stopped for a moment and stared at the broom as if willing it to behave. Determined, she tried again. 
She hadn't noticed that several trucks were already unloading workers nearby. Then she heard it. First a small, tittering, and then louder. She turned around. A group of women were laughing at her, and in the middle of the group was Martha pointing. Look, Cinderella, la Cindy. I don't know how to say it. I'll find that one out too. Cinderella, she laughed. Burning with humiliation, Esperanza dropped the broom and ran back to the cabin. In her room, she sat on the edge of the cot. Her face flushed again at the thought of the ridicule. She was still sitting there, staring at the wall, when Isabel found her. I said I could work. I told Mama I would help, but I can't wash clothes or sweep a floor. Does the whole camp know? Isabel sat down on the bed next to her and patted her back. Yes, Isabella groaned. I mean, Esperanza groaned. I will never be able to show my face. She put her head in her hands until she heard someone else come into the room. Esperanza looked up to see Miguel holding a broom and a dustpan, but he wasn't laughing. She looked down and bit her lip so she wouldn't cry in front of him. He shut the door and then stood in front of her and said, How would you know how to sweep a floor? The only thing that you ever learned was how to give orders. That is not your fault, Anza. Look at me. Aw, sweet Miguel. Okay, so he's coming to her and he's like, Hey, don't feel bad. This is how you were raised. You didn't know how to sweep. It's okay that you don't know how to do these things, but you have to let us know and you have to let us help you. So she's going to swallow her pride a little bit and let Miguel teach her. She looked up at him. Pay attention, he said, his, vo his face serious. You hold the broom like this, one hand here and the other here. Esperanza watched. Then you push it like this, or you pull it towards you like this. Here, you try, he said, holding out the broom. Slowly, Esperanza got up and took the broom from him. He positioned her hands on the handle. She tried to copy him, but her movements were too big. Smaller strokes, said Miguel, coaching, and sweep all in one direction. She did as he said. Now, when you get all the dirt into a pile, you hold the broom down here near the bottom, and you push the dirt into the pan. Esperanza collected the dirt. See, you can do it. Miguel raised his thick eyebrows and smiled. Someday you might make a very good servant. Isabel giggled. Esperanza could not yet find humor in the situation. Somberly, she said, Thank you, Miguel. He grinned and bowed. At your service, mi reina. That means my queen. By this time, his voice was kind. She remembered that he had gone to look for work at the railroad. Did you get a job? His smile faded. He put his hands in his pockets and shrugged his shoulders. It's frustrating. I can fix any engine, but they will only hire Mexicans to lay track and dig ditches, not as mechanics. I've decided to work into the fields until I can convince someone to give me a chance. Esperanza nodded. After he left the room, Isabel said, He called you Miriana. Would you tell me about your life as a queen? <laughs> Esperanza sat down on the mattress and patted the spot next to her. Isabel sat down. Isabel. I will tell you all about how I used to live, about the parties and private school and beautiful dresses. I will even show you the beautiful doll my papa bought me. If you will teach me how to pin diapers, how to wash, and... Isabella interrupted her. But that's so easy! Esperanza stood up and carefully practiced with a broom. It is not easy for me. All right, this is the end of the chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to look at your questions, read them completely, and to really think about your answers. All right, guys, I love you all, and I can't wait to see you during the next class. We'll talk to you later. Bye.